Well, hello everybody, and welcome to this episode of G Bears Off Grid Ways Homestead in the Desert. And there's my new shallow well pump. Just picked it up today and uh, just got it installed just now. And it is on and pumped up. And it's showing on the gauge here, it's showing 45 psi. So I've got 45 PSI at my faucets right now throughout the cabin. And uh, that's the five gallon pressure tank down there. As you can see, I wrote the date on it, 7.01.22. That's the date of install. So I know when I put this in because I was trying to figure out if my other one, the old one, was still under warranty. So I... Uh, had to go back through my videos and I found that it was uh, April 17th of last year, 21. So it was out of warranty. Now they have on these, they only have a 90 day warranty, a three month warranty uh, for standard warranty, but you can buy the two year extended warranty, which uh, I think is kind of ridiculous. They, they shouldn't be able to sell you something that they should be backing up anyway. So anyway, besides the point, it's it's in, it's working. I've got water pressure, and uh, everything is kosher. So over here is the old one. Now, on these uh, units, this was four seventeen twenty one. I just wrote that now because. I did look it up online on my videos to see when I installed it. Now there's a couple of things that if you do buy one of these and you do use one, a couple of things that you should know, and uh, I, I didn't cover it last time I did an install, but I figured, you know, while I'm doing this install, I should let people know about this stuff too. All right, over here, you unscrew this cap. Oops. And there's a a um, air valve there and it does have its little fitting on the inside so that is where uh, that is where you have to put 23 psi while this thing is empty before you fill it with water okay so you want to make sure you do that you got your 23 psi in there and don't worry if you go to 25, it ain't going to make that much of a difference. But try to get it at 23 if you can. All right. The other thing is, on top of this pressure gauge right here, there's this little rubber fitting right there. And there's a little kind of like nub that's usually on top of these things. And when you're reading the instructions on this, on these things from Harbor Freight, they are a little bit confusing because it never tells you what it says right here on the label. After installation, cut off top of cap as shown. I just use my um, box cutter to just nip it off, nip the, the tops off. And there's uh, apparently these things are filled with some kind of an oil. So I guess you got to do that for some equalization of pressure or whatever but you do want to make sure you do that now they they all come brand new with this red sticker on here and these caps insert plugs i should say and uh after you take this red um label off you can't return these to the store you have to call the um 800 number that's in the instruction manual and you uh We'll get instructions on what to do with it. But <clears throat> what I'm going to be doing is uh, taking off this cover right here. And the bladder should be attached to that. And I think I also have to take the um, lock nut off of the valve because that's going to be attached to the bladder also. So I'll have to... Um, take it apart slowly and see what's going on and then I'll get online with the uh, Harbor Freight parts and they're pretty um, cool over there 
you call them up and tell them what you're doing and all of that and they'll, uh, they'll put you online with a tech and he'll tell you exactly uh, you know if there's a specific order you got to retighten these bolts or and a torque that you have to re reset them to he'll tell you if there's anything else other than the bladder that has to be changed when you change the bladder he'll tell you so they're really nice about that kind of stuff but <clears throat> like I said I think this whole problem was caused by my own uh, fault of neglect because I did put it inside of my garage here over in that corner and I figured that it would be somewhat protected from the elements in the winter time and we did out of a couple of uh, deep freeze days where it got down really cold last winter and these things are not well suited to be in freezing temperatures because once it's up to pressure it's a sealed unit so ice expands or water expands when it turns to ice and then if you don't have some place for that expansion to go it's going to break something so I think that was probably what happened was the water in the tank froze and expanded and it couldn't go anywhere because there, there was no outlet because the faucets weren't open so it just punctured the bladder that's my suspicions but uh, I'll get this one put back together and and have a spare on the shelf so that when it comes to if I ever have a problem again I will have a uh, uh, a spare that I could just swap out and then order the parts in my leisure time for to repair the other one another thing is right here this black thing a lot of people don't know what that is okay that actually is a an adjustment you can turn it it's a, it's attached to a threaded stud at the top and when this thing is hooked up to the pipes you don't want this motor flexing so what you're going to do is turn this down against the tank until it makes contact so that that thing is solid so it doesn't when it torques kicks on and torques it doesn't lift up and down and cause leaks in your pipes so those are a few tips for uh, those of you people that are planning on getting one of these I, I'm I'm happy with it I'm, it's a pretty nice pump and it uh, maintains the pressure pretty well but what I think I might do down the line and I might do it with this one after I repair the bladder is I'll just take this off the, this tank and I'll keep it for I'll keep the, the tank for a backup bladder for the other one but this is a one inch uh, iron pipe fitting right here so I can get a 20 gallon this is only a 5 gallon I can get a 20 gallon pressure tank and tie this into the 20 gallon pressure tank and then I'll have 20 gallons of pressurized water before the pump has to kick on so the pump will run uh, fewer times and give me four times the amount of water or four times the amount of pressured water so that's my plan down the line I did look on um, line a couple of things and see if uh, there was um, anything online and I did find a couple of them for a couple hundred bucks uh, 20 gallon tanks and the you know, biggest problem is a lot of them don't ship to this desert so you have to pay shipping shipping and then uh, that's going to cost you know, an extra uh, 30 or 40 bucks to ship it so I'm going to see what I can find locally I know tractor supply carries them so I might drop over there and see what they've got and uh, all I need is a basically is a 20 gallon tank this pump will handle it and that'll give me a lot of backup water and then this year before the winter comes I'm, I've got some old shower doors leaning up against the back doors there I think what I'll do is I'll take one of those to the back side which is the south side of the garage and um, I'll build a wooden box with the uh, what they call a tin can solar heater and you stack the solar, the tin cans on top of each other paint them all black and you make sure you drill holes to 
uh, so the hot air can flow between them. And then the hot air flows up one row, down the next row, up the next row, down the next row, and so forth. Now what I like to do is the bottom of that unit, I have a pipe that comes inside of the bottom near, near the floor area of the, um, I'm sorry, of the box and into the, the garage closer to the floor. And that's the air inlet. That's where it sucks the air in to the, the, the cans. And then as it heats up, of course, heat rises. So it's going to force the, the hot air up through that box. And then I'll have another pipe coming out just above the, the tank there that will put out hot air. So if I get that set up just right, I can really heat this garage up in the wintertime when it's cold through the whole day and the residual should hold for the uh, through the night but in the meantime I will cover my tank over there with a Harbor Freight shipping blanket or two I'll wrap it up in the shipping blanket and make sure it stays um, warm in there because the water itself will stay warm for quite a while and my pipes any pipes that are exposed outside have insul insulation wrap on them so that should be it. All right. So I got my other little propane torch out here. I was talking about torches one time for tool time. And this is another really nice one. When you turn this, this one on, the blue flame that comes out of here as you open it up more, you can get a point, a blue point coming off of there this high out of the end of that nozzle. So it heats up very quickly so you... Um, don't have to stand around waiting to heat up a, a large pipe like my one inch copper over there. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining me. This is G Bear reminding you thumbs up down there, like my videos, please. And don't forget to subscribe and share. And when you say share, don't forget to tell your friends to, to subscribe because sometimes they forget. And a lot of people don't get to the ends of my video so they don't hear me say subscribe. And I don't want to do it like other people do it all through the video and aggravate you because that's not what you're watching my videos to hear. But I do want to get that out. Please subscribe. Tell your friends to subscribe. This is G-Bear signing off.